Hey, uh, I know I haven't done one of these in a while and uh, there's lots of reasons for that, but I'm back and um, I've been learning the importance of, okay, so the Enneagram, I'm going to talk about the Enneagram for a minute. Um, in the Enneagram, people who have studied the Enneagram there's this idea that there are three different intelligence centers, the heart, the mind, and the body. And so we are more realized, depending on our personality type, uh, we tend to be, we tend to operate out of one of those more, um, more fully than the others. So some of our work as it pertains to the Enneagram is to find ways to grab a hold of the other intelligence centers. So as a four on the Enneagram, which is a heart type, um, I think over the last several years, I have made a conscious desire to try to drop down into my body and become aware more of my body. And, um, and so that's been um, a great piece of work for me. I began to run maybe Four and a half, five years ago, I started the practice of running, and it really helped me kind of be aware of that other intelligence center. So something happened over the last several months, I would say, that has really helped me to kind of tap into those other really important parts that we kind of lose along the way. And um, in the process of letting go, um, this non-grasping, non-clinging way of living um, because I, I've experienced a lot of loss in the last few years. Um, I've recently gone through a divorce and I've watched as my kids have slowly, one at a time, left the nest. So I have two uh, college students and I have um, now that everyone's finished the school year out, I have a senior in high school, a senior in college, and my seventh grader is only has one more year of middle school before she goes to high school. And, uh, you know, so she's gonna be a teenager in like six weeks. So it just feels like there's a lot of transition, a lot of loss and so in my process of trying to honor my precious loss um, it's started coming out in ways that I never anticipated so all right so I told you I'm a runner and um, maybe as early as last September I began to um, feel this pain in my body which okay if any if you know me well you know that I can ignore things I've had two natural childbirths without any kind of medication at all. I can ignore headaches and I can really ignore my body to my detriment. It's not a good thing all the time. So I'm learning how to pay attention and listen and be aware. So last September, I began to notice this soreness of all places in my butt. Okay, so my left muscle back there was really sore, like enough that I noticed it. And so I began to pay attention, you know, used heating pads, that kind of thing. And then um, my dear friend Denise caught me in the middle of something. I was doing something and all of a sudden, whatever that was back there, just, it felt like it did something twisted or something to where I could not walk like I was immobilized uh, she came over helped me into the car I went to my doctor's office and they said yeah your piriformis muscle is messed up so they put me into physical therapy I began physical therapy with the best physical therapist there ever was her name is Morgan and um, so we began physical therapy. So what happened is you have a you have a sciatic nerve that runs from the bottom of one leg up around towards your hips and around the bottom of the other leg. It's a very long nerve. So my muscle was clenched and like 
just rubbing up against that nerve and that nerve wasn't wanting to move. So it was almost like this nerve thing going on. Uh, so she began to work on my muscle and one day I went in and so she started down below in my hamstring in that leg and I'm just laying there and all of a sudden she hit this spot and it, I mean, it, it was uncomfortable, like it hurt, but all of a sudden it felt like there was this connection to my heart. I began to just sob sob it was like she hit this muscle that went straight to my sadness and I just felt this overwhelming grief and sadness and there wasn't any story attached to it or anything it just I just felt this pure sad and so we talked about it she stopped and um, you know just encouraged me to go home and work on the exercises that I was doing and she said you're you're not ready to let go. And that just really hit me. So <clears throat> I worked on it. The next time I went in, I had just gotten a phone call as I was going into physical therapy. I got a phone call from someone who had my artwork up in their gallery. And she said, you just sold a piece called Letting Go. And it was this encaustic work that I had done. I had sketched this what I what I perceived as the process of letting go. <clears throat> it was this woman who was reaching out, grasping for what she was wanting to hold on to, but that thing was out of her reach, but she continued to grasp it. And um, so that was my working out, that was the art of letting go, and I had already done all of this work. I tore it out of my sketchbook. That was the first part of letting go. Um, I put it into a piece of artwork, framed it. That was the second part of letting this piece go. In the process, it was this metaphor of me actually letting go. And so then I actually hung it up and put a price tag on it, which was another process of letting go. And then when it sold, as I was driving on, on my way to my physical therapist meeting, I got this phone call that it had sold. And so it was this other piece of letting go. So I got on the table, she started working on my hamstring and that's in that place where um, drew the tears and uh, there was no pain there. Absolutely, it was absolutely gone. And so then she continued, it felt like that, that space where um, in my body was really contained to one area. So she continued to work on that, but, and then she said, um, I told her about the painting on my way here, and we both, she just said, I just got chills. And uh, so it was this, um, being able to drop down into my body and, and find where we hold our emotions, we hold our memory, we hold our intensity of what happens to us in life. We hold that in our bodies. Our bodies have memories. Our bodies remember. And it was such a beautiful dance of, I'm being asked to let go of some things in my life. To honor, you know, it's the grieving process of, of feeling angry, of feeling sad, of bargaining, of, you know, the denial of it, all of these different stages of grief. And finally we go into that space of acceptance, the letting go, the releasing, the acceptance of what life is, honoring that precious loss. And it just, I mean, it has these ways of like living metaphorically in our lives, in our bodies, in our heads, in our hearts in the people, relationships around us. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to share that story with you. It's still, it's still there. I'm still working, but my physical therapist uh, said I'm on my own. She let me go after, you know, weeks of work. And so I'm still working on, on it, doing my exercises, allowing things to release out of my body as I'm ready to let go. 
So if you're interested in that process, this summer I'm going to be doing an art journaling class for eight weeks, and we'll be looking at a lot of that, um, the holistic idea of what it means to be hu human, creating, loving, working, um, all of the things. So go to my website, flyforward.org, click on the art instruction tab, and you'll find information about the art journaling course I'm offering beginning in June and going to the end of July. I hope to see you there. Thanks.